on your quiz, which will most likely be next Tuesday, we're going to have a quiz over the new irregular verbs. We're going to cover them all. Um, but there will be a section that will ask you to change from present to preterite. So the verb will already be conjugated in the present tense. You will have to figure out what the subject is from the verb being conjugated. How do you do that? If a verb is conjugated, how do you know what the subject is if the subject's not there? Because that's going to be the network of the program. Not necessarily. If there's like an O at the end, you know it's like zero. Or if some of them where you already know because of the ending. Correct. The ending tells you which conjugation it is because it can only be used with that box. So you'll have to recognize the verb in the present tense, figure out the subject is from your ending, and then at, in most cases, go back to the original verb, for example. The verb to go in the present tense, voy vas va, vamos van, is um, irregular, but it's a completely kind of irregular in the preterite. So for example, if you have vamos, on your quiz and you have not, you don't have nosotros in front of it, you should recognize vamos, the nosotros form of the verb to go. Then you have to think back of, oh, it's the verb to go now in the preterite tense, which is what? Fuimos. Or the same form, fuimos, good. Okay. So just quick review of our present tense to make sure, and uh, this is all Spanish one material, so all review. Um, make sure that you can recognize these on your quiz, um, and on a few practice that we'll do, they'll ask you to change from present to preterite. Um, so, ir, remember your verb to go always has to be followed by an A. Okay. What happens with the verb I said? Your form is G, right? Correct. Your form is a go change. <coughs> the rest of them are all regular conjugations. Okay. Then for venir, it's a. What kind of change? There's more than one. The first one is the G change and the rest of them from E to I E. Good. So the first one is vangle. And then the rest of your shoe, inside the shape of the shoe here, you change from E to I E. Then for said, completely irregular. So it is es son. What happens with querer in the present tense? It changes the I to E and the J and the They're almost there. E to I E. Yes, in the boot. E to I, E in the boot. So in the shape of the boot. And the only reason why we call um, this is a true shoe verb because the yo form does not have the stem change. And it's just something weird that you have to remember. I also call this seat a shoe, although it's not really a true shoe because it also changes the stem from E to I and it has a go change. So I still call it a shoe to help you remember that you have to remember something extra about the yo form. But the rest of your shoe shape changes from E to I. Are you okay with these in the present tense? All right. Now, in the preterite tense, the same exact verbs. We already know three of these. We're just doing three now, and then we're going to do the second set in just a minute. Anything in common between E and said? Same box. Okay. So, fui, fuiste, fue, fuimos, fueron. Always remember that the um, AOS, AOS, ustedes form does not have an I. It's not fuyeron, it's just fueron. Um, every single verb we're about to talk about does not have an accent. So, you might want to make a big note on the top of your paper, highlight it. No accents whatsoever. Um, you don't need to know the reason why you just says you're in the same box. That um, comes later when um, in Spanish 3 when we, we have moved the comparison of the preterite and imperfect tense, both past tenses, to uh, Spanish 3. But basically, if you're describing, quick explanation, if you're describing something in the past tense, um, most likely you're going to use the verb said. But uh, description is one of the reasons to be used for the imperfect tense. So you wouldn't use it in the preterite, but use it in the imperfect. So I'm not sure who made up that you can um, make it the same as to go and to be, which they're obviously two different meanings. I said, we've already learned, was one of uh, the few irregulars that we did in the beginning. What happens with it? Changes from A to I. 
So, um, technically, you can think about it that way. I want us to start thinking about all these verbs as not just A to I, because in this case, it changes H I C and H I Z. So, we're going to start remembering this family of verbs that we're about to talk about as whole sum changers. So, the whole beginning part, what is it? H I C, or in this case, for H I Z also. For some reason, I said, um, and it's pronunciation purposes, uh, we say eco um, instead of iso there. Um, but isa, isista, iso, isimos, hicieron. There's a spelling change for pronunciation there. Um, but the rest of them will have the same stem for every single box. It's not a boot, not a shoe, not a basement. It's every single box changes to that whole stem change. We're going to call the whole stem changes, the whole beginning, not just A to I. So that one we already knew. But if you look in your book, um, page 10, for the verb querer, what is the whole stem change for querer? Q-U-I-S, or quis. Okay? So your conjugations for the verb querer, quise, quisiste, quiso, quisimos, quisieron. Always good to jot down the vosotros form, but you don't have to. You won't be responsible for it. Okay. Also notice on page 10, it tells you under uh, number two there, the verb querer has several uh, special meanings in the preterite. So it says that it can also mean tried, or if you put a no in front of it, it can also be refused. So if you want to add your meanings there. I will not make you responsible for knowing the alternate meanings, which will come with some other later verbs we'll do in. Um, that are part of the same family. Um, I just need you to make sure that you know the conjugations for each. And then just as long as you know the first meaning, wanted, um, obviously past tense. And you don't have to know the alternate tried or refused meanings. Okay. Remember that uh, when it ha whenever you have QU, you don't hear that U at all. So just quise, not quise. Venid. What happens with it? What's the whole stem change for it? Right, so vin. So remember the whole, then the reason why I want you to call these whole stem changers instead of e to i, because e to i is a basement change. I don't want you to confuse that. This is the whole entire box changes, v i n. Vin. So vine, viniste, vino, vinimos, vinieron. And this seed um, is on page 14 in your book. What does the stem change to? D-I-J, good. And um, do we hear that J sound in Spanish? No. Sounds like a what? H. Good. So, dije, dijiste, dijo, dijimos, dijeron. Notice for this verb, what's different about it? True. The rest of these that all fit within the same family use the same set of endings. So for this last one, the rule is, and there's only going to be one other verb that will do this that we're actually going to do on Monday when we combine all the irregulars together. Um, if the verb ends, the stem ends in a J, this last box is not I-E-R-O-N, it's just E-R-O-N. I don't make up the rules, I just try to color code and tell you about them. So what's in common between all these verbs? They all fit in the same family line. Okay, so whole stem change, and if you notice, these where you normally get accents for the yo form and the el ayo sed form, you don't have accents, <coughs> nor are they the er and ir endings. These are, of course, er and ir endings, and it fits because these are an I er and ir verbs so far. It'll change in a minute. But these you use regular er ir endings. These two. You think back to your AR endings, our preterite AR ending, but with just no accent. But not a single accent on this family of verbs. So this family of verbs, the, what will be in common with all of them is that you have the first part is the whole stem changes, and then it uses this set of endings. It's, if you want to think about it as a new box for just these verbs, you can do that. <coughs> e with no accent, I S to E, O with no accent, I M O S I E R O N. So we normally would have accents on the two that don't. That's why none of these verbs have accents. Questions so far? Okay. Do these few first. Do some practice. We'll go over the back of your notes, and then we'll do the um, rest of them.